Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant. And today I want to quetch on the one hand, because what I want more than anything else inside hybrid cameras that manufacturers refuse to prioritize for us are variable electronic internal neutral density filters like those found in the Sony FS5, FS5 II, and FS7 II, and acknowledge on the other Freewell's Magnetic Quick Swap Filter System, a surprisingly well-priced, high-quality, palliative remedy while I wait. And wait. And wait. Because for what we do, futzing with screw-on neutral density filters, or rigging up even a one-stage matte box to our GH5 and slipping filters into a tray, is a greater pain, for example, than our GH5's autofocus issues, which are real, by the way, but in our experience, overblown when it comes to daytime outdoor shooting to the point of irrelevance. Non-futzing NDs are also more of an issue for us than resolution, bit depth, or chroma sampling, depth of field, high ISO noise, or whatever else people tend to believe micro four thirds can't handle. This is true for two reasons. First, an internal ND is nothing more or less than a fully integrated, if partial, solution to the most basic need in image capture beyond focus, fully managing the exposure triangle. Given that shooting video deprives us of the same flexibility and setting shutter speed available to us when we shoot stills, and in our case, 99% of our video footage is shot at 24 frames per second with a concomitant shutter angle of 180 degrees, that is 1 48th or 1 50th of a second, depending on which camera we're using, Neutral density filters are the only way we can go as shallow as we'd like when we're shooting in daylight on the streets of New York. Second, micro four thirds in the real world is just fine, more than fine actually. It's outstanding, again, for what we do when it comes to video. But your mileage may vary, I get it, it's all good. Though, when or if Panasonic ever adds phase detection AF points and an internal ND to say a G9 Mark II or GH5 Mark II, we'd almost certainly pick one up, likely the last video-centric hybrid we'd buy for a very long time. In the meantime, I'll keep looking for the holy grail. But for right now, let's get back to the Freewell Magnetic Quick Swap System. Think of it as a mashup of Manfrotto's zoom lens adapter and filter holder kit with a lens cap with a pre-configured magnetically coupled neutral density filter, which at a hundred bucks makes it just 30 bucks shy of the zoom setup alone. Intriguing. Candidly, when Freewell contacted me and asked if I'd like to try their system, part of me said, why bother? I already like Polar Pro single density ND filters. Hold that thought. But the curious part of me won. Maybe magnetic attachment would be worth it. Maybe the filter quality would be good enough. They sent along a few single density ND filter sets and a few different filter thread sizes that I specified for the glass we have. And the bottom line is, I am impressed. Though, full disclosure, I realized only yesterday, and I've had these of course for way too long, that they engraved my name on them, so I guess I'm not giving them back. Why not variable NDs, you might ask? Good question. First. They didn't have them. Second, I wouldn't want them, at least based on my experience to date. Now, in theory, variable NDs ameliorate the cost, weight, and futziness of single density filter sets, but A, as with single density filters, that still leaves us the hassle of working with step up rings, because unlike far larger, heavier, and more expensive cine glass, we use a pile of different filter thread size photography lenses with which we must contend. And B, so far I haven't come across a variable ND that has the range I want, up to 10 stops, that is also free from significant color shift, vignetting, or star patterns as you crank up the darkness. Hold that thought. Of course, one can always decide to let auto white balance take over, and I've done this in the past, but it introduces its own set of frustrations, like the impact of clouds on color temperature or occasionally unnatural looking skin tones given the rest of the scene. But let's move on. My take on the Freewell system will now be pretty quick because my criteria are straightforward, minimal, and easy to evaluate. One, is there, or more likely how bad is, any color shift? Two, 
How easy is it to screw and unscrew the filter? Even the Freewell requires you to screw in a magnetized clear filter base onto the lens itself to which their ND filters magnetically attach. They also offer magnetic step-up rings, by the way, at $30 a pop. I can tell you that more than once I've had to separate other manufacturers' filters from step-up rings with my trusty needle-nosed Leatherman. Three, are there other optical degradations once the ND is attached? Again, I can tell you that I've experienced loss of sharpness using other filters, as well as the perturbations I just mentioned, like vignetting and cross-polarization, both with variable NDs and stacked single-density NDs, even those from well-regarded brands. Four, what is the build quality? This is not only about ease of screwing on or off, but the quality of the coating and the durability of the whole package. And five, is it a good value? The bottom line is this. While single-density Polar Pro filters have been my go-to because of optical and build quality, the king is dead, long live the king. We set up a Panasonic Lumix G9 with Leica DG10-25 1.7 down in the bat studio, flipped on a pair of bicolor LED panels set to 5600K, and adjusted the camera's white balance manually to match. In our control test at ND64, six stops, the Freewell was marginally but clearly superior to the Polar Pro, both in terms of color fidelity and image quality, equal to it in terms of build quality and ease of screwing on or off the base filter, and superior, of course, once it's in place, because you just leave that part there. The filter's diameter did not exceed the barrel diameter of the 10 to 25, nor did that of the magnetic lens cap that comes with it. This is really nice because we could still use the lens hood that normally comes with the 10 to 25, and that's important when you're outdoors. I'd expect this would be true for any other lens with which you'd pair it. The Freewell blew away the variable NDs from Tiffin and Syrup, as both suffered from precisely those maladies I've already outlined. This is why I'd put them in a drawer and hadn't taken them out until this test. Discoloration, reduced sharpness, and vignetting on the one hand. Build quality and the meaningless index each one has on the other. Of course, the Freewell was easier to take on and off to compared to them. So Freewell, nicely done, guys. I was also pleased by Freewell's glass. The filter coating, like that of the Polar Pro, seemed robust and cleaned up instantly with a small spritz and wipe. What about pricing? Well, you already know the Freewell system is 100 bucks. The equivalent six-stop Polar Pro ND6477 millimeter is 130 without magnets or lens cap. Tiffin's eight-stop variable ND is also 130, but owing to its optical performance, I wouldn't buy it at any price. Syrup's eight and a half-stop 82 millimeter variable ND is 190. Their 82 millimeter super dark five to ten-stop variable ND 209. The Syrup variable ND I have is their first generation, so perhaps these are improved. But if not, among these five. I'd rather invest in a pair of Freewell single-density setups. Even if the Syrup NDs were improved, I'd probably go with the Freewells because I could still use the lens hoods. I'd go with their 10-stop ND1000 for the 10 to 25 1.7 because it would get us all the way to 1.7 on a sunny day at noon with room to spare. As far as I know, they don't make an 8.5-stop unit, which is precisely what we need. I'd add a 67mm 6-stop ND64 for what I consider the other go-to lens in Lumix-based Micro Four Thirds setup, the Leica DG Vario Elmer 50-200 While this would end up being a stop short of its maximum 2.8 at the wide end, that's still a field of view and depth of field full frame equivalent of 100mm at f5.6 anyway, so not a big loss, and at the long end it's already a 4. And while it would be more expensive than the Tiffin, within spitting distance of the syrups, I'd pay for the convenience and quality. I'd have no problem, I've had no problem in the past, raising the ISO on the G9 or our GH5 two or three stops from base ISO as clouds or shadows come into the frame, rather than contend with vignetting or cross-polarization. Image quality at ISO 800 for what we do on the streets of New York is fine. I'd rather do that than futz with more filters. If I needed to go shallower on the longer lens, I'd probably wind up using our Olympus 75mm 1.8. Incredible glass. I'd happily cough up another 100 bucks for a 58mm ND 1000 set, except Freewell doesn't make one for that thread size. Then again, I do see that Freewell is now offering, not yet shipping, a 2 to 9 stop variable ND called the All Day Hard Stop for $200, and Polar Pro is now offering a 7 to 9 stop Peter McKinnon edition variable ND for $300. I might have to check those out.
but I'd still much rather have an internal ND filter. I would pay $500 more for a hybrid camera that had it, but what about you? In the meantime, Freewell ekes out the win over Polar Pro on price, marginal differences in optical performance, and clear ease of use. I am pleasantly surprised. That's it. For Three Blind Men and an Elephant, I'm Hugh Brownstone. See you next time.